Welcome back to the channel. In this one, I want to give a first, quick first impressions video of the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. Now, I've had this for quite a few weeks and I've kind of been struggling to think of a video to make for this because around about the same time, within about two weeks, I got this. And this is the Anbernic RG556. And they're both very similar, but both very different. They're both Android based for a start. And that got me thinking, actually, how many Android devices do I have? Well, I've got the Odin 2. Why would I need anything else, to be honest? That, that does cover pretty much all my Android gaming needs. And I've also, up here, got the Absolute. And then I started thinking, well, how do I use these devices? And the fact is, I use them all very differently. So obviously the, the Absolute I use for game streaming. It's fantastic at game streaming. It's got a really good screen, 7 inch, 1080p. I find the ergonomics of the Absolute to be pretty acceptable. I quite like the sticks, they're not too bad. Uh, as you can see here, I put different caps on them just to make them a little bit larger. But um, I, I use this a lot for game streaming. The, uh, the Odin on the other hand, I use this for quite a lot of emulation because it can take anything. You can throw anything at it and I'll run it at full speed. Uh, it also is pretty good at game streaming, but the screen on this, 6 inch 1080p, isn't nearly as good as the Absolute. And then we have the Anbernic 556. Now I got this pretty recently, but before I got that, this has got an absolutely cracking screen and I'm going to give it its own review on its own at a later date. And then we've got the tiddly little Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. And I thought, what, what do I actually do with this? And... Um, I'm actually using it a lot more than I thought I would. And I think that's partly because it literally is the baby brother to the Odin 2. Now, if I just take these stick caps off here and give this a side-by-side -side comparison, just looking at the two. Now, they're both in translucent cases. This is the ice blue. That's the, the Odin's in the purple. It's a different style of translucency. So if you have a look here, you can see this is a pretty opaque. It's a pretty smooth finish on the outside. The um, Retroid is more of a textured finish and it's um, maybe about the same amount of see-throughness. Difficult to tell there. That's kind of difference rather than a similarity, but similarities wise, what's the same? Well, as you can see here, the D-pad is the same D-pad. It's a really decent D-pad, has to be said. Sounds a little bit different, but it's the same D-pad. There's no difference there. The sticks, you're using the same sticks. A huge range of move, movement on them for uh, switch style sticks. Yeah, I'm trying to get a similar angle here. As you see, same sticks. These have got RGB rings. These, this one doesn't. But that's a that's a small difference. The buttons are different, but they feel just as good. They've got a nice amount of travel, and they feel pretty nice. One other thing that I noticed that was really similar, well, the top layout is really similar. As you can see here, we're crack running the power buttons almost in the same place, the volume controls are almost the same place, the vent is almost exactly the same place, and the mini HDMI out is the same, almost the same place. But also, this little joining bit between the case, between these uh, the bumper and the trigger, it's, it's pretty much near as damn it as well. Even the shape of the controls, you know, the bumpers, very similar shape, just scaled down in size. Same goes for the bottom. We have the uh, the audio jack in the same place and the charging point in pretty much the same place. It literally is the baby brother. Even looking at the back, side by side, you can see that the Odin's got these bumps, obviously, and it's got the extra buttons on the back. However, the shape from the trigger part down is really similar. But they sit very differently in your hand. So the Odin obviously sits right in the meat of your palms of your hands. And the um, Retroid sits more up in your knuckles, back of your knuckle, and it's a much smaller device. And I found I'm using this a lot more than I thought I would. Now the screen is only 4.7 inch, it's 750 by 1334, and it'll run at 60 FPS. But it's actually a pretty nice little screen, I have to say. Let's fire the game up just to show how nice this is, and I think we'll fire up Horizon Chase and I'll just carry on talking just now. Spec-wise, it comes with 8 gig of RAM, that's LPDDR4X, it has a MediaTek D1100. There's also a non-pro version, but we're not going to talk about that today. It has Android 13, which was a biggie for me. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think about the, the lower spec model because it comes with Android 11. 
It has 128 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage, which for me, that just isn't enough. It could do with 256. Some games, you know, like Genshin Impact, for example, are over 30 gig. You're not going to fit many games on this. But it does have a TF slot on the bottom, and it's actually a pretty nice little slot as well. And it also, it also seems like they've learnt a lot from uh, AYN, because their slot for the TF card is really high quality, the finish. And it's the same, it's different. Different setup, but it's very tight fitting. It covers up beautifully. Even says TF card, and it was just quite nice. But we'll just, um, I'm going to just give this and make this a super quick review. We're already at five and a bit minutes. I'm just going to show you a little bit of um, th this in action, frankly, just so you can see what it's like. And uh, I wanted to go through lots of game reviews, but I started a video already, and it was over 40 minutes long. And I thought, it's just too long. Nobody wants to watch a 40 minute long video. And that was where I was comparing this with the RG556. So if anyone's interested in a comparison video or two, let me know in the comments section. What else can it play well? So as you can see, Lime 3DS emulation, no problem with this device. Now I've got it in performance mode. And as you can see at the top right there, I've got the Wii FPS counter that Retroid bundle with it that you can just turn on which is really handy uh, that is running at pretty much a nice solid lot 60 so nothing to nothing to complain about there And that's the only hitch that I see in this game when you cross the finish line. Anyway, let's move over to some different emulation now. So 3DS is pretty good. So here we are, a little PS2 emulation. We're playing God of War 2. And uh, we're running two times native resolution here. Using the Vulcan back end. And I have to say, it's running absolutely fantastically well. As you can see, pretty much locked at 60 FPS. And... Um, it looks great on this little 4.7 inch screen. It just looks fantastic, way better than it should. And I'm terrible at this game. I do like it, but I'm terrible at it. But it runs, runs like a dream. Nothing wrong with that emulation, is there? Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Okay, let's cover to something else now, shall we? Okay, so it's a little bit of um, Switch emulation. We're playing a little bit of Prince of Persia. And I have to say, it's running well. You can see 60 FPS. Again, we're in performance mode on this little uh, unit. The fan is now spinning. And it's actually running pretty well. Look how good it looks on this little 4.7 inch screen. Cracking. Running like a dream. Running like an absolute dream. I'm going to do this little cutscene just so you can see how well it runs. Look how good that looks. Now we're running just, um, we're actually not running full resolution here, we're running 0.75, if I remember correctly. We'll check that in a second. Yeah, 0.75, so it's 540p we're actually running that. But, would you know what to look at that? Let 
mean, look how good that looks. Now, there's a dip down to 30 there. Did you see that? But that was mostly for that cut scene there. And it's sped right back up again. So it's very playable. Very playable. Okay. Let's cut over to what I've actually been using this for this last few days. And I'm not sure why I've been using it this way. But it just felt so right. So here we have it. Moonlight Game Streaming. Yeah, I'm using Moonlight Game Streaming to stream games to this little Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. It's only got a 4.7 inch screen. It's not even HD, really. And it looks fantastic. It plays really well too. So there you have it. My quick review of the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. It's actually, I'm not holding it very well here because I'm struggling to get the camera on shot, but normally I would nuzzle it into my, my hands like this. I'm kind of reaching around the camera at the moment. So yeah, I usually sit like that. I find it's actually quite comfortable between the knuckles like this. And uh, that's my little review so far. If there's anything you'd like to see me testing on this, just uh, leave me a comment in the comment section. I'm actually thoroughly impressed with this little uh, handheld. Like I say, I had an original Retroid Pocket 2 and I was very much underwhelmed with that. Very disappointed. And uh, that's what started me on this handheld gaming journey, this me revisiting devices because I'd kind of fallen out of love with handheld gaming and the, uh, the Retroid Pocket 2 was just the final nail in the coffin. But in the last two years, I've been back to loving it again. It's great. What's not to like? Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.